From infamous cemeteries surrounded by age-old curses and stories of extreme paranormal activity, to historic alleyways where it's said the ghosts of long-dead privateers still roam on foggy nights. Are you ready for our second list of picks for some of the most haunted places in New Orleans? Number 5. Our Nose our Nose, located off BNV Street in New Orleans French Quarter, is a widely recognized and well-respected fine dining establishment that boasts its reputation as being the largest restaurant in the whole of the city, as well as one of the few that serves true classic Creole cuisine. Historically, Arnaud's was founded in 1918 by French wine salesman Arnaud Casanave, who was also known as the Count. When Prohibition hit in 1920, Arnaud steered clear of the law and continued to serve alcohol through his private rooms out of inconspicuous china cups. In 1948, Arnaud would pass his business to his daughter, Germaine, who would go on to run operations until 1970. 78, all the while reigning as queen of over 22 Mardi Gras balls, and whom after which would sell the restaurant to Archie and Jackie Kasbarian. The Kasbarians would set to work on a series of extensive repairs, meticulously restoring the old structure to its former grandeur. Our nose remains open to this day and in the hands of the Kasbarians' children, Katie and Archie. Impressively, although the original restaurant opened in 1918, portions of the business's current structure date back to the 1700s, and over the years, thousands of purported paranormal phenomena have transpired within. One of the most famous and commonly cited apparitions on site is said to be that of Germaine, who's been encountered leaving the restroom in a fancy hat, staring longingly at her old costumes in the museum, and who's been known to frequent the annual carnival ball. Also reported across the premises are inexplicable drops in temperature, objects sighted moving on their own, disembodied voices and footsteps, and the constant feeling that someone is standing directly behind one's person. Lastly, shadowy figures and a range of full-bodied apparitions have been encountered roaming about, and the entity of Arnaud himself, always clad in a dapper tuxedo, has been known to check in on the place, seemingly overseeing operations until he's noticed, after which he always quickly fades from sight. Number 4. Lafayette Cemetery Number 1 Lafayette Cemetery No. 1, located off of Washington Avenue in the Garden District neighborhood of New Orleans, is a graveyard widely recognized as being the oldest burying grounds both owned and operated by the city directly. As history has it, this site once acted as part of the community of Lafayette, a suburb of New Orleans, with the cemetery being founded in 1833 as a non-segregated graveyard. When Lafayette was annexed by New Orleans as its fourth district in 1852, the entire area would be transformed into part of the much larger cityscape. Sadly, resulting from years of weather, crime, and frequent vandalism, in 1996, the cemetery was added to the World Monuments Fund watch list. Confined to a singular block layout, Lafayette Cemetery No. 1 boasts an impressive 7,000 burials, 1,100 family and societal tombs, and around 500 wall vaults. On-site interments at Lafayette continue into present times, though not as regularly, and though the cemetery was closed to the general public as of 2019, tours are available on a limited basis. Lafayette's aged burying grounds are said to be haunted by those laid to rest on site, namely by the many burials resulting from waves of disease such as yellow fever, and those who have frequented its expanse have reported disembodied voices from markers and vaults, footsteps from empty areas, and knocking and scratching sounds from within walls and from the earth itself. A number of visitors tell of encounters with shadowy figures and full-body 
bodied apparitions in clothing spanning the eras, and orbs in strange mists have been known to appear in the backgrounds of photography. Also reported from Lafayette are encounters with a group of ghostly children, often accompanied by the sounds of echoing laughter, chatter, and play, as well as the constant feeling of being watched. Number 3. The Andrew Jackson Hotel the Andrew Jackson Hotel, located off Royale Street in New Orleans, is a historic townhouse-style hotel that's recognized as one of the most visited lodgings in the whole of the French Quarter. As history has it, in 1792, the site originally held a boarding school and orphanage for young boys, until 1794, when this facility burned in a fire, a blaze which sadly claimed the lives of five youths. Following the tragedy, a federal courthouse was erected on site, and in 1815, it was utilized in holding General Andrew Jackson in contempt, and later in charging him with obstruction of justice. The old courthouse was eventually demolished through the 19th century, with our current hotel building taking its place in 1890. This new property would change hands multiple times over the years and would be added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1965. The Andrew Jackson Hotel remains open to guests to this day, offering a classy and intimate venue alongside top-notch accommodations, all within walking distance of some of the city's most popular destinations. Chillingly, the Andrew Jackson is said to be one of the most haunted lodgings in New Orleans, with many claiming activity as a result of the boys lost in the blaze so long ago, and staff members and guests have reported lights that turn on and off by themselves, objects sighted moving inexplicably, and accounts of televisions turning on in the middle of the night within locked rooms. The full-bodied apparitions of a group of boys, often sporting gruesome burns, have been sighted wandering the building, talking, laughing, playing, and, sometimes disturbingly, screaming. The ghost of a woman thought to be a former housekeeper has been caught straightening up rooms and has been known to disappear when approached by the living, and an entity matching the description of Andrew Jackson himself has been encountered on the second floor. Lastly, room 208 is said to be haunted by the spirit of a young boy named Armand, who some claim either jumped or was thrown from the window. Guests staying in this room have reported extreme cold spots, bodied giggles, the sensation of being touched by tiny hands, and terrifying instances in which they've literally been thrown from bed by an unseen force. Number 2. Pirate's Alley Pirate's Alley, located in New Orleans Jackson Square and connecting Rue Royale with Rue Chartres, is a historic row that derives its moniker from pre-1964 legends of it being a former safe haven and stronghold for privateers. Historically, New Orleans was founded in 1718, with the alley designed in 1721 as an unpaved passageway called Rue Orleans that was intended to connect Chartres with Royale Streets alongside the St. Louis Cathedral. The city would grow up around the alleyway, and though many of its earlier buildings were destroyed in the Great New Orleans Fire of 1788 and later in another blaze in 1794, the city would rebuild through the late 1790s and early 1800s, and through the 1830s, the alleyway would be paved in cobblestone. This Humble Routes moniker was officially altered to Pirate's Alley in 1964 due to persistent but mostly false legends that famous pirates, including that of the notorious Jean Lafitte, once utilized it as a secretive meeting space. Through the 1980s, when roadways encompassing Jackson Square were converted into a pedestrian mall, Pirate's Alley would become an even more engaging and active locale for bars, restaurants, and novelty shops of all types.
into present times, the alley remains a popular tourist destination and landmark location, hosting numerous events, wedding parties, and countless visitors each year. Some claim paranormal activity surrounding Pirate's Alley may stem from the adjacent St. Anthony's Garden, which was initially a burying grounds and later a dueling site, and many nearing that area have reported orbs visible to the naked eye, unnatural cold spots, and shadowy figures sighted slinking about. In the Faulkner House bookstore, based out of William Faulkner's 1920s residence, many have cited a translucent figure bearing a likeness to the legend himself, and the ghost of a priest, one Father Dagobert, has been encountered near the cathedral, as well as walking the alleyway. Lastly, the most famous legend surrounding this spooky strip tells that in 1814, Jean Lafitte met with General Andrew Jackson somewhere along the alley to negotiate the, ahem, escape of his brothers from prison. While historians argue the alley's proximity to the church and prison would make for a pretty poor location for a pirate to spend his time, this hasn't stopped reports of encounters with an apparition matching Lafitte's description, who's most often sighted walking the stretch on foggy nights. Another version of this tale tells that the pirate's apparition is actually that of one Reginald Hicks, who was accompanying Lafitte while he traveled to the city. It's said that Hicks fell in love with Marie Angel Beauchamp, and that when it was discovered she was with child, he sought to marry her. This legend furthers to tell that the only minister they could trust was located at the old parish prison, and that the couple eloped right in Pirate's Alley, a tradition many uphold into present times. Sadly, it said Hicks was killed in a battle shortly afterwards, and that his spirit was left roaming the area, forever seeking out his true love. Number 1. The LaLaurie Mansion the LaLaurie Mansion, located at the intersection of Governor Nichols and Royal Streets in New Orleans, is a privately owned historic property that, in recent times, has grown in both popularity and infamy amongst paranormal researchers of all caliber. The aged abode is widely recognized, and not in a good way, for once playing home to Madame Delphine LaLaurie, a New Orleans socialite and serial killer who pleasured in torturing and murdering her victims within her household. Historically, the plot was purchased by Delphine in 1831, with construction of her mansion complete with slave quarters concluding just a year later in 32. Delphine would reside on the property with her third husband and two of her daughters. On April 10th of 1834, a fire of dubious origin broke out from within the home. During the blaze, a number of civilians attempted to reach the locked slave quarters in order to make a rescue, but strangely, the LaLaurie's wouldn't relinquish their keys. Eventually, bystanders broke the doors in and to their terror found seven enslaved individuals chained and stretched within, most horribly mutilated. It was later discovered that the fire had been started by a young enslaved girl who'd been chained to a stove by her ankle, and whom was actually attempting to end her own life before being forced to endure further torture. Following this horrific discovery, Delphine was chased from the city. The mansion and its grounds were all but destroyed and would remain in said state for around four years, until being fully reconstructed by interested parties in 1838, and later being sold off between various owners, one of which was actually Nicolas Cage in 2007. Today, the Lawlery is owned by one Michael Whalen, who works closely with Chad and Carrie Hayes of The Conjuring, and it's been insinuated that the property property may be used in future endeavors detailing the life of Madame Delphine. Chillingly, Delphine's reign of terror isn't said to have been isolated to her four-year stay within the home alone, and many have speculated that it's more than possible she killed her first two husbands, abused her children, and tortured and murdered countless forgotten souls. 
Additionally, it suggested that Delphine dabbled in dark magics in the occult, and in 1894, following its reconstruction, when a tenant was found brutally murdered within the old home, many claimed the death was a result of supernatural affliction. Across the property, many have reported extreme cold spots, objects sighted moving on their own, shadowy figures, and full-bodied apparitions spanning the eras. One disturbing legend tells of a young girl named Leah who jumped to her death from an upper window to avoid a relentless beating from Delphine. Her small, frail spirit has been encountered throughout the mansion, usually seemingly watching the living from a safe distance, and has been sighted by passersby gazing from the windows. Also surrounding La Lurie are whispers of ancient curses, and many claim that even stepping foot on the property can severely affect one's luck. Lastly, the apparition of Delphine herself has been sighted, though only briefly and usually hurrying around corners or out of sight, and a handful of accounts tell of visitors being hit, pushed, grabbed, or even scratched by something unseen. Taking into consideration its dark history, extreme level of supernatural activity, and range of associated ghost stories, we felt Lollery Mansion was the perfect choice as our pick for the most haunted place in New Orleans. Thank you all for tuning in to our second list of picks for some of the most haunted places in New Orleans. If you enjoyed hearing our histories and ghost stories as much as we enjoyed telling them to you, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn notifications on so you get alerts when fresh content is on the way. Throw us a like if you feel we've earned it, and most importantly, share this upload and our channel with anyone you think could use a good scare. We'll see you all next time.